Ladies and gentlemen. All right, there it is. Turn the vines in the building. There we go. Fellas, I appreciate you joining. Middle of the road, middle of the tour. Thank you guys for doing this. I've hit up a couple of you guys individually about wanting to do this for a long time. We really, really appreciate it. First, for someone, if, if someone's been living under a rock and they just do not know who you guys are, could you go around the room properly, introduce yourself, plug and promote anything and everything, and let me know whereabouts in the world you are right now. I'm Jay. I play guitars and we're in Orlando right now, our hometown, because we're practicing for the next tour. Okay. I'm Anthony. I, 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 I play the singing. And uh, yeah, I'm in Orlando now because we're practicing for the next tour. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name's Tristan, and I am a drummer. Where are you? <laughs> are you in Orlando too? Uh, yeah, we're, we're all in Orlando. Fuck, he's in Orlando uh, too. I am uh, Robbie. I play guitar. <laughs> I actually used okay. to live in Oviedo, right around the corner from from Orlando back in the day. I Literally right around the corner. That's actually where we keep our uh, our tour bus is in Oviedo. Oh yeah, it's like five minutes down the road. The address is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not telling you where the address is, but it's in Oviedo. Oh, <laughs> Hell yeah! Well, I, I appreciate you guys joining, man. Big things seem like they've been happening lately, nonstop for you guys, left and right. Uh, the the album's fantastic. Uh, I guess where to start? Where, uh, talk to me about about the tour coming up that that you mentioned. Catch Your Breath, yeah, I know's on it. Uh, we just had Hope Fool, who's playing a show with you guys in Texas. Uh, I think they're doing one of the opening, they're a smaller band doing one of the opening acts for you guys. But uh, talk to me about the preparation for a tour of this size. Um, It's kind of preparation as any other. Like we're doing a few days before the actual tour starts, we got the rehearsal going on. We're pretty much practicing as often as we can with the, uh, the week leading up to the actual departure. And because um, it's like so close, from the last tour we did like it's not a whole lot of time in between yeah tours, we, didn't, so. we didn't really need much practice because we literally just played this these songs every night seven days a week for like three weeks straight a couple weeks ago so we just gotta tighten up a little bit get the gear going and uh then yeah we're gonna hit the road with until i wake and catch your breath and it's gonna be dope as as a show that primarily focuses on like smaller artists than your guys' size what is some band tips merch wise like about how much merch do you go out on tour with and then let's say let's say hypothetically a week and a half in you've sold out everything what's your process for for replacing it by the time the next show is ready well thank god that hasn't happened yet but um we we do a lot of mer like our our type of band like we generally bands like like ours like we do a lot of merch uh, sales um, just because the the horror culture is like so big and prevalent. And they like to spend all their money on on scary stuff, which is awesome. Thank you for that. Um, but like we we like the very first tour we went out on, we were able to see pretty quickly like what inventory levels we were going to have to to keep. You basically just have to take your average. You know, if you play ten shows and one night you do two fifty and and the next night you do seven fifty and your average is 500 over those two nights you just need to make sure like you need you have 500 dollars worth of inventory on hand every night you play do you have um, a do you have a plan in in store for a, a a 1250 night where you're out and you have two days till the next one like what is the process for getting more merch while on the road and you've sold out Manager and go, hey, yeah, I yeah. I, like I said, we haven't had to deal with that because we bring a shitload of merch with us. Anthony's sitting on it right yeah, now. Yeah, that's actually, actually what I'm sitting on right yeah, now. Yeah, we've got our <laughs> we've got about nine pieces of of merch right now yeah. that are ready to go. Right behind us. Yeah, you can actually. Oh, don't don't show the label. It's got the name of the stuff on it. Uh, true. Uh, you <laughs> can't see it. <laughs> Zooms in. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> if we run out, we just make a phone call to our 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 merch company, uh, AKT. Shout out to them in Orlando. Um, and they'll uh, they'll drop ship some merch out to one of our upcoming shows at the venue, and we're good to go. Grab it there. How long does it take Robbie to put on his his makeup per per gig? Too long and didn't read. I, uh, <laughs> uh, typically about an hour at this point, forty five minutes to an hour. I imagine after a while you've got the process down, so it gets faster and faster. And it used to be it used to be like two hours, two on, and a half hours. On the previous tour we were on, we learned that we could do our makeup going sixty down the highway. So that's <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a cool thing to learn. Uh, 
There you go. Hell yeah. Uh, has have you guys? I want to know about like the worst show you've ever had. Everything everything went wrong at this particular gig. It's happened to every yeah. band. But just give me a story or two. Yeah, bro- probably Brooklyn on the last tour, and it wasn't even a bad show, but yeah. it was our first show of that tour, and we got there like. Oh, like late. 45 minutes before we were supposed to play. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, our in-ears were going in and out real bad. Our, our sound wasn't good because we hadn't dialed anything in yet. But <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I would say also Connecticut was probably like when we, the uh, the button that fixed the entire problem. Oh, yeah, but that show. wasn't during the show. Like, oh, no, but yeah. that whole day we were like yeah. freaking out. So we basically had all of our channels linked and we were spending <laughs> hours trying to figure out why all of our like, so basically, I could hear vocals coming out of the guitar channel and and bass coming out of the kick drum. It was just all messed up, and like it took us forever to figure out. But that show was actually good. Oh, it was a great. That show. was a good show. But the the Brooklyn show is probably the worst, just because, like I said, none of I our had my s- headphones fall out in the middle of a song. That kind of sucks. But we really haven't had any bad shows yeah. like yet. You yeah, know, fingers wood, crossed. Right? <laughs> That's why we're here practicing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Hell yeah. Uh, my special guest co-host today is, is Encircled Throne. Encircled, do you have a question for the fellas? Speaking of the tour, I've seen this in a couple of bands talk about this. What has been, let me, let me see how I worded it. The most ridiculous excuse you've gotten from a venue or promoter as to why they will not book you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, that's not, a, not a problem, not a problem yeah, we haven't, had yet. We haven't run into that issue. Um, well, uh, there. We were booked for it, but I know that uh, House of Blues in Orlando has some some funky yeah. rules. Yeah, House of Blues. How, like we we were kind of on the fence with House of Blues whether or not they were going to approve us to play there. Um, I don't know if you guys remember how Ice Nine had the kind of drama with with uh, with Disney, Disney properties. Oh um, yeah, uh, because it's Orlando. Yeah, so like the the horror, the gore stuff, like kind of freaks them right. out. We actually we actually got approved and played a pretty much sold out show at, at House of Blues um, with just other local bands on the on the bill and it went great but we, it was like touch and go for a while we were kind of worried we weren't going to get approved <laughs> yeah, to play. Yeah. <laughs> Has uh, well, let's see did you guys did you guys bring the hot sauce? I don't know if I don't know if Tabitha <laughs> mentioned anything about hot sauce. We love our hot sauce. Uh, well, some of us do. Some of us are complete wimps. Oh man. Yeah. I love hot sauce. And singing, no. The reason I bring it up is is we do we do like a trivia segment where I ask you guys your favorite movie, what's your favorite movie or TV show while you're on the road, something you've seen so many times, or if I ask you trivia on it, you will not get stumped. And if I stump you on, and you pick it. Hot tub time machine. Hot tub time machine. <laughs> okay, but do you have the hot sauce? It's okay if you don't. It's not required, but. Do, oh, do we have Oh, yeah. go check the fridge. See if we got any. There's, there's bound to be Why, some like, in the fridge. I didn't know what we were doing, man. Uh, yeah, I didn't know we were doing this. I would have brought hot sauce from home. Glad it's not papers. No worries. All good. Uh, <laughs> while, while we're stalling, he's grabbing the sauce. I'll look up a question. But uh, what would you guys like to accomplish by by the end of 2023? Like, looking back on, on this year, what goals have you set for yourself for the band? Found lime juice. That's not going to work. <laughs> I can't It'll work. It'll work. It'll work. We'll make it work. Like it like- but yeah, what about the, uh, we'll do goals. Goals for the band? Um, we actually have recently talked about that. Um, I think going into 2024, we want to be ready to do a full European tour. Um, a and, couple festivals. And, and like, yeah, definitely hit up some of the bigger fests that we want to play. And then I know we get asked a lot to uh, come to Australia too. So that's, that's definitely in the, on the goal list for, for 2024. Has the band always been a, a horror themed band or was that something that kind of you, you pivoted yeah. at a certain point? No, that was pretty much from day one. Um, like our debut single was yeah, our debut town, single so like... town. It was Halloween town. Like, I remember when you reacted to that, like, a, it feels like a million years ago. It does feel like it's been a while. I didn't know if you'd done anything prior to that. I think that was just the first time I'd ever heard you guys, but uh, it was awesome. And uh, the album's yeah. awesome. That was our first, that was our first song as a band. Like I, I wrote the music and I sent it to uh, Anthony to, to write to, and he sent it back with a message. He's like, this song feels like it's about Halloween it, before I even write lyrics to it. Can I, can we just make it a Halloween song? And, and we all were like, 
Well, I guess we know what kind of band we are now. This is cool. Like we we get to go down like our favorite road of just like being horror themed because we were kind of dipping our toes in it. But like we went we weren't really diving right in. And like after that song came out, it was like this feels right. We got our answer. Like we know what kind of band we're going to be now. If if someone has never heard Dark Divine before, what song are you go, are you going like this to them, and playing first in the headphones? If you can only get them their attention for two minutes, Runaway or Halloween Town? Yeah, I'd say that's the most like, you know, it describes yeah. us the best. I would say. Yeah. Let's go with Runaway. Let's go with Runaway. We're hanging out with Dark Divine. Please support them by hitting the follow button. And we're about to stump them here in just a minute on some hot tub time machine trivia. It would win me over if I had the headphones on in, in those two minutes, that's for sure. Definitely win oh, me yeah. over. Fellas, you're about to be stumped. Enjoy the lime juice. Here we go. Let's see. In Hot Tub Time Machine. Now, they start off easy. If you get the first one right, I do a little bit of a harder one for the second one. What is the name of the ski resort where the entire movie takes place? Kodiak Valley. That is correct. Give me a hell yeah. That is correct. I must now consume my second hottest hot sauce that I have with me and somehow properly still manage to conduct this interview in a, in a, in a fashion. And I'll, I'll get you with a, a harder one. Uh, and, and Circle, give another question while I, while I uh, suffer for a minute. Dragon's Breath from Japan. Ooh, oh, that sounds, sounds spicy. It's, it's a thick red sauce too on a future tour what is one band you really want to tour with um i mean the the obvious bad omens yeah i was gonna say bad omens (laughs) motionless spirit box would be fun um north lane north lane holding absence (laughs) yeah slipknot metallica Corn, corn, death tones, disturbed, <laughs> Justin Bieber, <laughs> and Queen. Uh, but, but yeah, Bad Omens. If you, if you had to agree on the best horror film ever made, could you guys come to agreement? No. No, no we've, no, tried. we've no. tried. We've tried. We've <laughs> tried. What, 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 was the, what was the stuff you tossed around? Okay. So we basically, like to get that answer, we just kind of go around the room and say, what's your favorite, what's your favorite horror movie? Now we've got multiple votes for a certain movie, but we can never like reach a unanimous decision on it. And yeah. like for me, it changes a lot depending on you know what movies are coming out. Like I know Scream is getting more sequels that is coming out. So like I've been watching the Scream movies a lot more now. Right, but that I mean, Thirty Days a Night. That's your favorite horror movie of all time. It's a good horror. It's movie. a good horror movie. It's but it's not even it's not even in the top ten, bro. Okay. Twenty eight days <laughs> later. So Twenty days later, man. It's better than. All right, so so the Jaws. Hellraiser Hellraiser has two votes in this band that I know of. Three votes. The the original Hellraiser has three votes in this band for the for the. Oh best. well, technically the original Hellraiser is not my vote. Oh, three? Hellraiser three is not. Yeah, it's fucking. Oh, whatever. It's in the same trail. It's in the it's in the same family. I always thought it'd be it'd be cool to have like an actual cube autographed by uh, the the original Hellraiser actor. That'd be Doug badass. Brad, Brad, yeah. Bradley, Doug, Bradley. Doug, Doug, <laughs> Doug. <laughs> is, is there is there a horror movie that had like like a shocking kill scene that you always think of like that is just a crazy effed yeah, up both kill the, scene? Both, ter- both the Terrifier movies, the first they one when the girl was hanging about. upside down. Yeah. Oh yeah, the, the chainsaw. Oh, that was that was gnarly. Yeah, eat mashed potatoes. potatoes. What the fuck is that shit? Yeah, Terrifier. Terrifier is uh, it's up there. Do you guys have any uh, interesting right before you go on stage pre-show rituals? Zero. I I'm, I don't allow them. <laughs> I'm pretty. Yeah, boring. Jay's strict. You know, we're no, we're having a fucking fun. huddle. No fun. No huddle. No fun. I, go sell T-shirts, you fucks. We're not. We're not. Say, we're, standing we're, in a, we're not standing in a circle doing the 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 prayer thing. We're not patting each other on the back or doing the the awkward dab on stage before you start. Like this isn't the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> like just go on stage, do your job. Let's have fun, but like I don't need to make it. We don't need to make it a whole thing. We can hug after we like kill the show. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, well, let's let me let me flip the, the question a little bit. Let's say you just you just got main stage at one of the festivals, like a Blue Ridge or something like that, and you just played for for ten thousand. 
who is the last man standing if we happen to be enjoying some some booze or flour, whatever the case may be, after the show? Who's the last man standing? Like, uh, it's a party old. night. It's a party <laughs> night. It's a party night. It's a party night. Who's passing out last? Yes. I'm gonna be asleep before it even starts. That's true. So I'm gonna say I'm out. Last the whole thing we're, we're, and then... we're not. We're like we love our sleep. Yeah, dude. Like we're when we're done playing. We I want to shower after. I'm yeah, done when playing. we're done playing, we're all covered in makeup. Yeah, but and if like it's a, we, if it's a party night, Tristan and I will probably stay up after. Everything. Yeah, dude. Jared doesn't sleep. That's true. He doesn't sleep what? ever. Like, Jared doesn't. Jared I don't will, think I've seen him close his eyes once. Jared will stay up for four days with you, bro. Like, I don't even know how he does it. <laughs> Uh, in circle, did you have a, another question for the fellas? You you asked mine. I was gonna ask about the ritual before going on stage. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, well, don't suck. That's our ritual. Yeah. Don't suck. Do your don't time. suck. Go. Um, do you work? prefer old horror or the new horror movies? Do you like the original setup of them, or do you like the newer ones better? Are you asking me that? I'm asking them that since they couldn't determine a movie. Do you like old horror or do you like new horror? Well, uh, you gotta because uh, to some people, old horror is is the '80s, but like to me, old horror is like the '40s. So like and '30s. So it really depends. <laughs> it depends what what era of old you're talking about. Eight. Your era. Like what era? Era, what era? do you prefer? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like I love the horror movies of the '80s, but a lot of most people consider that like older. But like horror movies have been around since like 1920, so it's like yeah. I watch a ton of 80s horror movies, like like the classic uh, Friday the 13th. Well, I guess 70s also, but all all the Friday yeah. the 13th can watch those nonstop. But uh, let's see if you can get the second one, which I feel like you, I feel like you guys are gonna get it. But we'll try for some lime juice in hot tub time machine. What is the name of the Russian energy drink that causes the time machine to function? Ah, sure, no, no, Damn it! Yeah, hell yeah. You have definitely seen that movie many times. Damn it! I, I felt I knew as soon as I asked it, I didn't stand a chance. I, I got to chug the whole beer. Uh, well, let me ask another question, though. So the album's out. I know nonstop touring is probably the goal for, for the remainder of the year. Festivals, blah, blah, blah. Is there, while you're on the road, do you guys write? While you're on the road, do you, do you have like a mini laptop DAW system set up just to do something on the we side do. on a day off? but we don't we don't write on on tour as of, as of right now we yeah. don't yeah just, we, we're still getting the hang of things we have and it's because like when i'm home i write so much that like i have enough material to like get us through Go whatever on. we need yeah. to get you know produce material for like when we're on the road it's just time to have fun like i, don't, I really don't want to be at work that's true when i'm on the road <laughs> what yeah what, what's a what's a common mistake you see smaller local bands make on a regular basis that you're just tired of them making that mistake you play too many shows they take every show that comes their way we were a band for a year before we played our first show and we had already had like an established audience we already had like 30 000 or fifteen thousand monthlies on spotify we already had like 10 20 000, you know on the different social medias and before yeah. playing your first show ever before playing our first show ever yeah be patient it, yeah, you got you got to you like basically if you can build an online presence in 2022, 2023 and beyond, people will show up to your to your shows more more likely. Like you'll have a better gauge as to what your market value is if if you know that hey, I can get 30,000 people to listen to my music on Spotify, I can probably get 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 people to show up in my local scene if I can get 30,000 to listen on Spotify, right? Like that just that just makes sense. That's you know? really good also, advice. Like also like embracing avenues to do that, like stuff like like we started to blow up on the TikTok, which is kind of like how it got the ball rolling. It's the reason we got signed and I see a lot of bands who they'll they shy away from They shy TikTok. away from it cuz they're not like they don't embrace this as a medium of promotion. It's literally free algorithmic promotion. Yeah. And it's a tool. And you can pretty much guarantee that like if you post consistently with, with decent content on your TikTok, 
one of them at some point just playing the odds is going to go viral and it, and it could be a small one, yeah. small virility or it could be large virility where it's like you know 20,000 for a local band that plays to 10 people getting 20,000 views on TikTok that's still a lot you know um and and that can propel you to get you know in front of more ears and and help help your band grow like you got to use every avenue available to you re- regardless of how you feel about the platform you know it's going back to the festival of 10,000 people partying except <laughs> everyone's still standing it's munchy time. What is your favorite go-to munchy snack after a show? <laughs> These guys made me stop <laughs> at this gas station called Sheets. Oh yeah, I've heard of it. I've heard of it. And we I had never oh, been there man. before. Get we down. we go in there and they're like, dude, what are you gonna get? I'm like, bro, I've never been here before. Tristan's like, you gotta get the jalapeno poppers, bro. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. hell yeah. <laughs> Fire. So we we always ended up at sheets after shows and like with the munchies. Um, um, my go-to is gushers. Well, they sell those uh, at sheets. Sheets is an establishment. It's a place. Yeah. <laughs> also, I'm always down for breakfast after a show. Like I don't know. Oh why. yeah, we oh, did yeah. Denny's a lot after. Yeah, you know, Denny's always hits. We're not. It, it tastes people. better at nighttime for some reason. It really does. Well, early morning. Yeah. 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 Depending on. We only have time for a couple more. I know you guys are super busy. Uh, just a fun, another fun question. Hypothetically, uh, the label's like, here's ten million dollar advance just for each band member for no reason whatsoever. You've taken ah. care. You've taken care of your family. You've taken care of all the gear you could ever want. What's just a cool toy that now you can afford that you wanted when you were young? You've got millions. Don't worry about it if it costs a hundred k, two hundred k. You got nine point nine million left. All right, 9.9 million left. I'm going to invest Just, it. No. <laughs> what are you um, buying? Shit, I want an island. And I want to paint it purple. Bro, you're not getting an island. Uh, That's not enough. It's <laughs> not enough for the island. <laughs> it's a small <laughs> island. Yeah, Santa, I want an island. I got this rock that I threw in the ocean. <laughs> like a four by four plot of land. <laughs> you have no concept of cost. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've never seen a million dollars. Like, I barely know it exists. You're like Rain Man. A Snickers <laughs> costs two hundred dollars. Uh, <laughs> jet ski one. That was a good one. That jet ski would be cool. Yeah, I um, like jet skis. I want to go on a nine million dollar vacation. I just want to have like a good time. And <laughs> bro, shut up. You're never gonna spend that on. I mean, maybe you would. I don't I, know. I would get. I would get. Um, Cause after gear, my mind went. Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I would buy. The, I would buy the dopest tour bus on the planet. Ah. Pay a driver for like five years of driving, so I never have to drive the rig ever again. And I would just go. I would just take the boys, and we would go live on the road for for five years in the dopest tour bus ever made. Chat wants to know how was how was a uh, Broken Hearts Fest. That was fun. That was a fun one. That's our that was our hometown show, so it was great was to see one. all the uh, all the nice. friends and family. Yeah, Almost, that that one was pretty much sold out too, and we that that night was crazy. It was wall to wall people. It was awesome. Orlando is always amazing. Facts. Where? What was the? I imagine your first show ever was in Orlando. What venue was it? Same it's one. Same, same one, one as, that uh, was Broken Hearts. Okay, Fest. for sure. Uh, <laughs> it used to be called. It used to be called the Haven. Yeah. Oh yeah, the Haven. And, uh, That's called now it's called Conduit. Kind of near Full Sail area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Down, okay. Down on the side. Yep. Yeah, you really are from here, huh? Yeah, I, I, I went to Full Sail. That's why I had to live in Orlando for two years, but I lived in Oviedo at the time. But anyway. So, but you spent all that money and you're not a producer. Unbelievable. Uh, it's, it's weird because when I went, this was a, at least, I don't know, 17 or 18 years ago. Like the 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 music industry's changed. Like at that time, like everyone was all about Pro Tools and now you can do every single thing you need just from a laptop. But you, it wasn't like that. It kind of was getting there. But right. I, I don't do anything with it whatsoever. But uh, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> and circle, we got time for one more question each. What's your final question for the fellas? On this upcoming tour you're doing, which show are you most excited for? Which location? Uh, Urbana, is there... Urbana, Urbana. I'm excited that for the House fun. of Blues in Anaheim. Yeah, that, that one is going to be yeah. fun. Same. I know well, we have some people in. We, we're actually located in Southern California. I know we have some people that are actually like stoked for you guys to, uh, to be there that night. They said that my friend Lizzie in chat right here said she's gonna buy some merch for sure that night. Hell yeah, we'll have some. We'll have a whole lot of some. Whole lot of some. 
like sitting on the shirt you're gonna that's, be wearing. That's gonna be a, a good <laughs> show too. We got all we got all the big brass from our record label. They're all gonna be out there because they're 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 uh, based in uh, South Southern California. On on a night like that, this isn't my final question, but on a night like that, because the head honchos are in the audience, do you, is there is there a little extra discussion that goes on in the van or or bus that that like, hey, let's do something just a little bit different tonight to wow them a little bit more? Not, I mean, when we do it every night, you kind of get locked into muscle memory. It's sort of like it's comforting to know that you have every aspect of your show planned out. Um, we try not to veer away from the plan just because that's when you introduce mistakes. Like, yeah, where there's risk. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, our record label owner, um, him and I, we talk a lot. So, like, I'll probably, like, throw an ice cube at him or something. <laughs> like, like, nothing. <laughs> That works. Uh, my final question is, let's see, final question. Post Halloween Town, it's it's time to finally sit down and and work on the next album. Have you pre discussed like a particular producer that that you want to work with in the future? Second album's already done. Yeah, right? <laughs> really? It's already done. I did not know. We we don't know this as as fans on the side. That's all behind the scenes stuff. So, so it, like yeah. Second album's done. We got our we got our dream producer that that we didn't even know we wanted, that we, but we needed. Um, his name is Zach Jones. He uh, lives in L.A. Um, and he did like uh, we came as Romans. He did Chelsea Grin, mm -hmm. Crown the Empire, Scene Queen, Scene Queen. Like yeah, he's done a lot of a lot of big names, and and he's really taken helped us take our sound like up to the next level, several notches. Yeah, yeah he's awesome. I know that sometimes we're not allowed to discuss certain things regarding an album that's not out yet, but can you tease a possibility of when we could expect a first single from that second album? Soon. Soon. Like, 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 like really soon. Like we might have. Let's go. Excellent. Excellent. Fellas, we'll let you get back to, to jamming, rehearsing. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Stay safe on the road. Sell out a merch every night. I, I, I hope. And uh, gentlemen, we look forward to the next single. Cheers. Have a fantastic day. Dr. Vibe! Give me a hell yeah!